You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. It matters. When you tell me it doesn't matter, then get out. Because it matters. Good morning, good people. Mark Holt here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, and I mean literally, does not work. Oh my God! We have some da 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 breaking news. The Dallas Cowboys have finally woken the hell up. It's finally freaking Friday, and they have made their first move. They have converted $16.25 million of Zach Martin's salary into a signing bonus, adding one additional voidable year to free up $13 million. Dallas now holds around $9 million of the top 51 salary cap space with Dak Prescott's hefty 59.4 figure still on the books. So we are now about three and a half million dollars. Let me see if I can pull it up right now. We are about three and a half million dollars in the black. So now we are no longer winning at being the lowest amount of cap space. I sat here last night and I was thinking, and I think I was talking to my man, Game Time Brian. Shout out to Game Time Brian, who's over 1,600 subscribers, growing, and uh, growing like crazy. He's up there, you know, let's see, I'm fortunate because, you know, I'm here at the Red Brick House and work on the Red Brick House. I've got my studio set up right here so I can do things, you know, I can have the television on, you know, it's just me and my wife, so... I can go ahead and do whatever I need to do. News breaks, I can pop right down here and bring it to you. Um, and and we're good with we're good with that. Um, Brian, he's on his way to work in the morning. He's got like twenty nine thousand miles. He has to walk to deliver the mail and everything. And he goes ahead. He gets that video out on the way to work. He takes his lunch break. Okay, and see that's why he's svelte and not not a fat ass like me because he takes his lunch break and he talks to you guys about the stuff that's been going on in the Cowboys. Although we've only been having drama to talk about because they haven't actually made any moves. But I remember talking to him last night and saying, you know, the conversion for the contracts, they build this into the contracts of being able to convert money. In fact, if you will remember the very first year of Dak Prescott's contract, they ended up converting some of that money into a signing bonus to get some more cap relief. And there's a lot of contracts that they can do this with. Now, here's where it gets to be interesting. Jane Slater says that, you know, the Cowboys, you know, they've got, the, you know, by August, they'll get Dak Prescott done. The thing about this is free agency frenzy starts on the 11th, which is Monday. And we're going to be live. I th I'm thinking about live streaming all day. I, I might try 24 hours. I might try and – and what I might do is I might set up a camera and a television so wherever I'm working, we can we can just follow everything. You know, I can say, hey, we got somebody signed this, that, and the other. But I, we'll, we'll, you leave in the comments if, we, if you want to do that, okay? Just leave in the comments. Let me know. I'm so excited that we finally did something. Um, there's other contracts that they can do that, this with to get some more capital. They can do this with uh, Demarcus Lawrence's deal and get a little bit. They can do this um, with uh, Michael Gallup. They could actually cut him, but I, I don't see them in any rush with Michael Gallup because you're not going to get the money until um, June 1st. So there's no thing on there, no rush to that. They can do this with Diggs' contract. They can do this with Steele's contract. There is money that can be had if they want to, and they can do this with Dak as well. They could go ahead and convert – you know, twenty million of Dax money and get it for this year and have money to work with 
um, for this year and not do a long-term contract. So the question will be is, are this this the first of many moves that will give them some money and then they'll surprise us with a free agency move, like maybe trying to get Saquon or maybe trying to get Derrick Henry or maybe a linebacker or an offensive. I don't know. I don't know. But at least this is the first bit of hope that we have. At least come Wednesday, we are now under the salary cap. Now, when it comes to the Cowboys, like I said, we've all been pissed off. We've been going crazy. And this is not new. We've been in the same situation every year because they always tell us the Cowboys don't care about winning because they don't sign any free agents, not any free agents of note. And this is not like this is something that's just happened last year. It happens every single year. Stephen Jones literally thinks that if you sign a free agent, uh, you know, bottom more than a bottom tier one, it's admitting that you made a mistake and we don't make mistakes. And I would say I would rather you admit that you made a mistake and make up for it by having to go in and get a free agent to fill a void than saying we believe in our own guys, which is not a bad thing. But when you say we believe a safety can play linebacker and be a run stopper in the playoffs, then there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. And when you look at some of the players that are being released, like, you know, Justin Simmons and things, there's so many safeties out there that it's like the market may be depressed because there are so many of them out there that some of them, it's like musical chairs. There's not enough chairs to go around. So this is where it behooves you that if you think that this is the opportunity, and I think it is. I think the Eagles are on a decline. I don't think the Giants, with Daniel Jones tearing his ACL, and they don't really have a quarterback. Washington's got some money to play with, but you know they're going to have a rookie quarterback. And so you look at this and say, you have a good shot at being the first team to repeat in your division. And still looking at the landscape out there, I know we lost to the Green Bay Packers, and they're you know up and coming. They're a young team that's going to go. We got San Francisco, although they've been to the Super Bowl, that, you know, we saw what happened to the Eagles after the Super Bowl. They looked and said, oh, great team, you know, best team in football and everything else, and they crashed and burned. So you look at this and say, I don't know how many more opportunities we're going to have. And with Mike McCarthy being on the last year of his deal and us being on the second year of his offense, it should be better. And you should look at this and say, if we had Dak Prescott with 36 TDs and nine interceptions with basically a below average running game, what if we had a good running game with him? What if we cut down on the 39 sacks to 30 sacks? How good could that offense be with some momentum going into the playoffs? And on the defensive side, the fact that we won 12 games without really having linebackers after Leighton Van Der Esch went down. And basically having one major weapon of Jalen Smith. I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. Micah Parsons. What if we ended up getting another edge rusher and a defensive tackle in there to help on the line to take some of the pressure off of Micah Parsons? And what if we had a run-stopping linebacker that was in there? How good could this team be? And that would be the mentality that it should be for the Cowboys as opposed to building for the future. I don't know what future you're building for because football changes quickly. So we'll see. Maybe this is the beginning of changes. But as we go back through, what's interesting to me is I I love history. I love history because you can learn so much from the past and equate it to the present day. There are no real things. Technology changes and stuff, but the same issues are always there. And this is funny because I can, I'll tell you what, I'm going to play this and we'll discuss it. Okay, let's listen in. Is there any reason to think it will be different that in the next two weeks, which is when this window closes, they will have a long-term agreement? In two weeks, I don't think so. But if they, even if they franchise in March 9th, they have until July 15th to work out a long-term deal. 
One of the holdups on this deal and others that are being talked about around the league is that we're still waiting for the salary cap to be set for 2021, which will have an effect on what the salary cap is going to be in 2022 and on how you structure all these long-term deals. We're still waiting on potentially the new TV contracts with the league to be signed. That could happen prior to the start of the league year. And if they come in at monster numbers, as some people expect, then the salary cap could be higher than, than we think it's going to be that would trigger a 17-game season this year. That has an effect on the economics of the league. So, so this and a lot of things are on hold. I'm not, I know everybody's going to get upset. I'm not excusing what happened the last two years in terms of not getting a deal done. But as for right now, what I can tell you is they have had discussions. Each side knows where the other stands. The issue is still about length of the deal, not money. They have offered money that he considers uh, to be respectful. So it's not an issue of disrespect. It's an issue of do they get to an agreement on how long the contract is going to be. Uh, they have several months to do it, and there's still optimism on both sides that they can. That's fair. But this is why we're all going to get mad, Marcus, right? Because it feels to me like all these things that we're still trying to figure out, and you're right, Dan, I'm sure they're all legitimate. What's the salary cap going to be? Is it years, four years, five years? Three? Somehow, when teams desperately want to get a deal done with their franchise quarterback, they manage to work their way around all of those things, and Jerry and the Cowboys, Marcus, have mm -hmm. managed not to for two years and counting now. This what does funny that to tell me. us? That tell us is stupid. That's number one. <laughs> it's it is absolutely stupid. Because when players ball like this, they're supposed to get paid, and it's not supposed to take this damn long, okay? And I hear, like, this is not at you, Grass, but you 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 just reporting the facts. You the middleman, so don't take you. this the wrong way. I'm so sick of hearing people say they want to get it done. You know what? I love this. I wanted to marry my wife, G. You know what I did? I put a damn <laughs> ring on her finger. I wanted a car because I don't want to walk like y'all do wait, in New wait, York. Wait. I don't want to take an Uber all the time. So I bought a damn car. You know what? I wanted nice suits. So I told Jay Hilburn, make big suits for big dudes that fit and doesn't look like sheets on us. I want a lot of things and you know how i got them i went out and did them I signed there you a go contract to do them i wanted to work at espn i signed a contract to work at espn because espn said we want you to work here too so we agreed on things the dallas cowboys and dak prescott have been going through this song and dance for too damn long now it's about what dak prescott wants Period. This no longer is a negotiation. It's no longer anything to do with what the Dallas Cowboys year. think they should do <laughs> or try to place. But, Grass, listen, the Cowboys last year went out and got Andy Dalton. Mm -hmm. That's who they went and got to yep. try to back themselves Andy Dalton. up. Everybody now we're having a up. conversation of if they should if they should draft the rookie. Grass. <laughs> You're going to really sit what? here He's a backup. and try to try to get me to believe what? he was a backup. He was a backup Ooh. with the idea that you may need to be our starter this year. three million bucks. Graz, let me get back. Graz, let me get back to saying what I was saying. You can want whatever you, you want. Stuff but up? if it takes three years to do it, you don't really want it. And that's what the Cowboys are go. telling everybody right now. So, Dak, do your thing, man. Play under this franchise tag and go out there and get whatever the hell you want. Frank, I'm <laughs> sorry. I had to let you it out. You need to learn about wanting, Graziano. You don't want nothing enough. If you want it enough, you will go get it. That's I'm right. With, I'm with uh, Spears on that. That all makes, all makes sense because there's no reason why they shouldn't have gotten this done up into this point unless they don't respect him. Because you, we talk about mental toughness and we talk about executing on the field. And all those things are things that Dak Prescott has shown time and time again. I can tell you when I be became a member of the Dak Prescott fan club Ooh. because his rookie year before the Green Bay playoff game I said Tony Romo should start this game because he gives them the best chance to win I was wrong because we got to the fourth quarter of that game and a rookie playing for the most famous franchise in America in the playoffs Dak Prescott outplayed Aaron Rodgers in that fourth quarter, led three scoring drives to tie that game up. If it weren't for Aaron Rodgers throwing that Im incredible play mm -hmm. pass on the sideline to Cook, they would have won that game. That day, people left and was like, man, the Cowboys sure missed this opportunity. And you know what I said? Damn, the Cowboys are lucky. They found a quarterback. There you and that's go. when I became a member of the Dak Prescott fan club. And that's when Jerry Jones but should have too. There you go. The more things change, the more they stay the same. This was three years ago.
three years ago, the same time people were saying, let let Dak walk it. I'd take Teddy Bridgewater to have a better team. Where's Teddy Water, Bridgewater right now? Okay, so let's hope that this is the beginning of some big things to happen for the Cowboys. I'm hyped right now. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, you know, you know, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And uh, keep the faith. We will be talking about everything Dallas Cowboys. Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? Let's no. Go. They suck. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <sighs> Caleb Carter? It's like, they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't. Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <sighs> Caleb Carter? It's like, they shit on you. Kill them. Oh, my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them? I hate the style.